Hey everyone, thank you for clicking on the video and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris. I run Dark Blue Chargers here in Manistee, Michigan. Today we're going to be looking at a brand new 2024 Stealthcraft 1860 Mod V. Stealthcraft makes a great boat, but I'm not here to sell you a boat. I'm here to show you some things that I love about Stealthcraft. Even a couple things that I don't. So let's start with the, well, let's go from the ground on up. First off, you're going to notice that my boat is dirty. And that's because I wanted to give her a really good run. And I've been running her hard over the last couple of months. I wanted to give her some really good time on the water to figure out what I like and what I don't like. And uh, one category really outweighs the other one. But let's start right down here at the bottom. Starting with the trailer. Got a nice spare tire, of course. You got to have that. You don't want to get stranded on the road. The trailer itself is it has a roller system on it. And these rollers are just absolutely smooth. This thing comes onto the trailer so easily. The anchor box or the, uh, the anchor crate or whatever you want to call it. Nice diamond plate. Nicely welded, and this is the thing I like about Stealthcraft is they add these little touches on here. This uh, probably plasma cutout, just little little details like that. I really, uh, I really appreciate. And they got those in different places throughout the boat. For the bottom, they call this their Guide Tough series, and, and this is an option. Uh, what it is, it's a molded plastic that goes on the entirety of the bottom of the boat and up the sides slightly, and. What I was told is this is the same material that Snowboards is made out of, and it's probably 16th of an inch thick or so. But I can tell you, it is super, super tough. You know, I put my nose up into the sand every day, into the gravel when I'm uh, launching or, or docking or whatnot, and there's no signs of no signs of wear on there. So nice, uh, nice feature. For the bunks, a nice high double bunk. You know, you're, uh, you're launching and recovering in a river. It can be a little dicey sometimes. Nice roller system on the back. It goes all the way underneath the boat, as well as on the side. Same on both sides, of course. Vortex wheel hubs. Moving up into the boat now. Of course, your standard, uh, your standard winch and chain. River Larry anchor system, power anchor system. I have 70 pounds of pyramid weights on there. That picks it up, no problem. This is one thing I give Stealthcraft a lot of credit for. They they think when they're building things. So I have a switch here for the river, Larry. I have a switch back here, also for the river, Larry. And then I have a switch up on the on the uh, console also. So three places, because you're all over this boat all day long. And it's nice to have different places. If you're standing right there, you want to operate that thing. Into the front of the boat, so big deck up here I mean, you can definitely stand up here if you want to it's got non-skid on it pretty nice feature front storage system i have i think five or six full-size life jackets in there and they fit no problem front lower deck dirty but again non-skid very very grippy another big hatch right there and you can get anything you want down there i can get my my 19 uh, inch blackstone down there no problem and there is my uh Mitten cooler, 45 quart. I think fits just perfectly on this boat. Moving aft, got my oars. Had them strapped into the side like that. It's just a nice place to keep them. So these boat tie down straps, these are absolutely genius. I love these things. So fast on the side of the boat. You just release them by hitting that release button right there. It's just a ratchet strap. Take that off there, no problem. To put it back on, obviously you reinstall it there. Crank your ratchet, and she comes down super, super tight. Drain plug, of course. And again, Stealthcraft is thinking. They put a place right here in the back of the boat to store your drain plug. Back here to the back gussets. Super, super strong gussets. I've got two of my rod holders installed right there. I have my other two installed here on the sides. A couple other things to notice back here on the back of the boat. So they do have oar runners right here, oar cutouts. So if you don't have a top on and you got your oars just on the sides laying inside the boat, it's a nice place to keep them so they're not bouncing all over the place. And they do install a bungee there also. Power plant on my boat is a 11580 Jet Mercury, Mercury four-stroke. And trash Mercury, all you want. And uh, I've probably done it in the past also, but I've been really impressed with this motor. You could wait an extra year or two 
for a Yamaha, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I have been highly impressed with this motor. She starts right up every morning uh, within seconds. I never have to prime it, so I like it. Not disappointed at all. Transducer mount on the back. Magnetic breakaway. You're gonna hit things in the river. It's nice not to break the things when you do. Back deck. And this is where all the work gets done. You can see the three holes going there. That is for a seating system. I have two seats for this boat. I've just taken them right out because uh, myself and my customers and my friends are always up on that back deck. I've also purchased a couple pieces of rubber matting that I put back here to keep the ice down. And they're actually inside. You'll see them here in a second. But uh, very nice, big, stable platform. All right, before we crawl up inside the boat, we'll take a look here at the enclosure. And if you're thinking about getting an enclosure on your boat, just do it. I fished on both kinds, with them and without them. And if you're going to be out there on the water in the middle of winter for any period of time, this thing is the way to go. This thing is fully modular, which means I can take the panels off. I can take the sides off. I can take the back off. This thing is really well built and worth the extra couple of dollars uh, to get it on your boat if you're thinking about it. I'm telling you, if you're thinking about it, just do it. You will not be disappointed. All right, so when you're ready to get up into the boat like I am now, a couple of nice step platforms on both sides, all diamond plated as well. Pretty easy to get up there. Looking uh, from the front to the back of the boat, there's that back deck again. Cup holders. Yeah, fishermen never drink anything, so what do you need those for? No, they're nice to have right there. Down below, that is where that hatch leads to. Again, there's a gas tank. I forget the gallons on this. It's pretty big. 20 gallons, maybe. Let's pop this open. And there's my net back there. Bilge pump. Battery. And again, my foldable net. This is a Stowmaster, and she's a big net. But uh, even that big net folded down fits nicely right back in there. Stern light mounted on the inside of that hatch. Stern light uh, receptacle right there. Down to the flooring. So this is called, or what Stealthcraft calls, spaghetti matting. It's just super, super porous. Water drains through it, no problem. But yet, it stays really dry. Pretty darn slip proof. So when you get ice and snow back here, which you will do, it, uh, it stays pretty safe on you. And it will drain right through. It's removable. Of course, there's my scuppers for my water drains. So in the springtime, when you're ready to get all the crud and crap out of here, that uh, froze into your boat, pop that thing right out, and you can wash out the entirety of the bottom of your boat, as well as that spaghetti matting. Okay, so rod storage, which is something you're always thinking about on a somewhat smaller boat. Where am I going to put these things? Because steelhead rods, river rods, are typically pretty long, and they can get a little cumbersome. So Stealthcraft has uh, thought up some really ingenious ways to store your rods. These are Nova Tackle 11 foot 6 rods. And they, uh, they slide right up front. So the, the tip of it goes right up to the front there. And I don't even take my floats off. You can, but the floats will actually fit right through those. If you're running longer rods, you don't want to break them down. If you run like a 13.6 center pin or something like that, which I do have on the boat sometimes. They do have these top trays, which is right above the, uh, they call these taco trays. But uh, they do have these upper rod trays that, uh, again, have a place in the back there where you can put the tip of the rod. And then just lay the rod in its entirety right along that tray. And then they have a nice little bungee locking system right there. Lock it down because that rod will fly out of the boat if you don't lock it down. And ask me how I know that. And this is the opposite side. Same setup. Same taco holders. Have my plug rods over on this side. Again, another, another long tray up there for you. Same system in the back. These trays are super, super tough. Now you can walk on them all day long. And uh, you're not gonna have to worry about breaking them. Give you a quick look here at the uh, the oar locks on the inside. These things are heavy, heavy duty. I don't even I can't even count that high how many bolts are in there, but uh, they are not going anywhere. And you have several positions for your oars as well, so you can dial it in whichever way you want to. All right, looking forward, we can look at the uh, center console section here. It has all your controls right there wherever you want them. It does have a flip down windshield. If you don't have a cover on or if you don't want your windshield up for whatever reason, you can flip that down. All your controls for your anchor, your nav lights, your cockpit lights. And this does have three different cockpit lights and they run underneath the rod trays and up underneath there. So when you turn those on in the morning, it's a nice soft blue light. 
it's not um, making you lose your night vision cabin lights bilge pump winch controls again are all up here steering wheel throttle standard throttle motor turret or motor trim rather on your outside rather than the inside fuel gauge couple cup holders again because fishermen sometimes like to drink things and i have a garmin seven inch striker up here and uh, a striker is one of their less expensive models i don't want to say cheaper models because it's not a cheap model it's a good model but the reason i went with this striker is because it has mapping ability uh, garmin has a pretty unique system where you can turn on this mapping ability and as you're operating it will map out the floor for you of whatever body of water you're on if you look at sea maps or navionics there's not a whole lot of really good maps for the manistee river system so the reason i went with this is because i can actually turn that thing on to map it out record and I get a really nice uh, interpretation of what that river's like, where the holes are. You can change the color shading to whatever preferences you like. It, uh, it was the best system I could think of to go with without breaking the bank. And it has some really nice features that are going to keep me, keep me on the water knowing where those holes are throughout that river and uh, permanent records of them. So I really like that. Down below your center console, another nice big storage area right there. And then another nice hatch down here. Goes all the way up to the nose. And they do offer bow mount trolling motors. All right, so I've gone over all the things that I like about this boat. And so I've given you all the positives. I'll give you some negative. Because again, you guys know if you watch the channel for any length of time, I'm not just going to sugarcoat things. If there's something I don't like, I'm going to tell you those things. But overall, this is a solid boat. I will tell you that right now. This thing is a river runner extraordinaire super smooth on the river uh with that 11580 jet on the back i get cruising speeds are easily 25 to 30 and it hugs the corners like it's on rails i don't know what top speed is yet because i haven't pushed it up that far but it has to be over 40 and i have no doubt it would probably still stay on the corners throughout the river but uh, being a new boat i just have not pushed it up that high yet but super smooth well-built boat the thing feels solid and that's the biggest thing for me. It just feels solid. I like the way it handles. I like the little features. I like the layout. Love the enclosure. If you're going to get a boat, if you're thinking about getting a boat for the river, I will highly recommend Stealthcraft Boats to you. Now, they're that good. They really are that good. They're built by river fishermen for river fishermen. And so you know that there's some thought that goes into all the details. Okay, so the negative things, and these are very, very slight, and they're actually nitpicky. But uh, I know Stealthcraft, when they watch this, if they do watch it, they're not going to see this as me cutting on them in any way, because I'm not. But if you look up here where the rods go into the front of the boat, when I first got this thing, the amount of fiberglass dust that was coming out of those things was astronomical maybe it's just an oversight on their part it's not that big of a deal at all again it's just a little nitpicky and i don't know what that stuff is that's leaking out of there could be part of that fiberglass dust mixed with something but uh just uh just little things like that and then you can also see that the fit and finish on on those things is just not that great there's glue messily applied around there things like that just looks like it might have been done in a hurry and it may have been other than that I do not have any kind of a gripe on this boat whatsoever. This thing is a machine. The finish on this thing, the sides, everything inside, polishes up beautifully. This thing is a looker. I get compliments on it all the time. If you're thinking about a river boat, like I said, you are not going to go wrong.